In Mobile, Alabama, we are fortunate to have an abundant supply of water. However, getting that water from the source into the homes and businesses is hard work and takes time, energy, and money. We hope to give you a behind-the-scenes look at the complexity of this process and the effort required to get water from our source to homes and businesses where it is used in our daily lives. There's a lot that goes into turning on the faucet and having good, clean water available. Please enjoy our series on what it takes to keep water working. The Ma's story begins with a beautiful 3,600 square acre lake, just a short drive west of our city at Big Creek Lake. We are fortunate to have this resource, but like many good things in civic life, we sometimes can take it for granted. Our mission at Malls is to protect and enhance the safety, the health, and the economic development of the community. And this can only be done if we have good, clean water. And we are very fortunate to have an abundance of that here in Mobile. The source of our drinking water supply is Big Creek Lake. It's also known as Converse Reservoir. And it's a 3,600 acre man-made lake that was built back in 1952. And it provides the drinking water for this community for today and it will for future generations. There are six large capacity pumps that pump the water from Big Creek Lake into both of our filtration plants. That is the heartbeat. That is the lifeline of this utility. Everything starts at Big Creek Lake and at this pump station. Without those pumps running, we don't get water to our citizens. So it's, it's a critical component of what we do. The Big Creek Lake pumping facility sits on the eastern edge of the lake. This pumping station is equipped with 800 horsepower engines to collect raw water that will move through two 60-inch diameter pipes to both filtration facilities. But before the water can be pumped, steps have to be taken to ensure environmental integrity and security of the watershed and the land surrounding Big Creek Lake. It's about 104 square miles of property and all of that drains to Big Creek Lake. So whatever goes on the ground in that watershed area ends up in the lake. So the cleaner that we can keep the surrounding area, the better off we are as far as being able to protect our drinking water source. We have a watershed management plan and as part of that watershed management plan, Malls is always looking to conserve the areas around the lake. All around the 3,600 square acre lake, Moss has created a self-sustaining program of purchasing land when it becomes available with proceeds from lumber sales on already Moss owned acreage. A good way to better protect the water source. We work with a local company to make sure that we cut the timber, regrow the timber, uh, to keep the protection, of course, it helps us protect the environment around the lake and it gives us a natural resource we're able to utilize. Our employees do a great job out around the lake. It is a very large area to try to police and make sure that we're staying on top of things. And the dam itself, we have worked with a consultant to inspect that dam to make sure that it is in good shape and it's safe. Uh, there are the gates that we have to open in that dam on occasion to allow water to leave the lake. And this is normally if we were to have some very heavy rains. You don't want to get too much water in the lake so that it could create a problem and damage the dam. So we open these gates to allow water to leave the lake in a controlled fashion. It is a manual process at current time, but we are looking at trying to automate that because unfortunately, some of the times they have to go out and actually open those gates manually is not under the most ideal circumstances. The dam that created this beautiful community asset is physically and technologically the same dam of almost 75 years ago. Automation of our water supply dam includes upgrades for several reasons, including safety. It is a safety concern. It's also just a productivity concern as far as allowing us to go ahead and open those gates when we need to while also addressing other issues if they should occur around the lake. Without this place right here, the whole city of Mobile will shut down and we'll not have no water. That consists of your flushing your toilets all the way to 
getting water out of your faucet for cooking or bathing or anything else. So the importance of Big Creek Lake is everything starts here. As you've seen, our water comes from an abundant and naturally beautiful source. It still takes a large continual and expanding effort to keep our water source safe and clean. Next in our series, we will provide an in-depth look into the filtration of our water. For more information, please visit keepwaterworking.com. In Mobile, Alabama, we are fortunate to have an abundant supply of water. However, getting that water from the source into the homes and businesses is hard work and takes time, energy, and money. We hope to give you a behind-the-scenes look at the complexity of this process and the effort required to get water from our source to homes and businesses where it is used in our daily lives. There's a lot that goes into turning on the faucet and having good, clean water available. Please enjoy our series on what it takes to keep water working. In Mobile, we have two filtration and purification facilities, Stickney and Myers, both located in the western area of our city. A few filtration steps, such as dewatering, are coordinated between the two facilities, a reason for their close proximity. Myers, the newest plant, is over 30 years old, but both are immaculately maintained and efficiently operated. The combined capacity of the two facilities is 90 million gallons a day, but the daily demand is between 45 and 55 million gallons a day. The water that we purify here, it comes from Big Creek Lake. We have a 20 million gallon reservoir and we're capable of doing 60 million gallons a day with the four low head pumps that we have here at the facility. As we go through our sedimentation process here, the coagulants or the turbidity settles out to the bottom of our settling basins, same at the Stickney plant, and any surface water facility within the state has the same issue. And when you do, we vacuum that. I guess the best way to describe it is similar to a pool vacuum for those that wouldn't know, and we put it into a trough and send it down to a, a thickener that's in the dewatering facility here on plant premises. and that thickener has a cone-shaped bottom and the solids there settle to the bottom and we add a polymer to it to settle that, that out even more. It's not part of your drinking water process, it's simply the, at that point just dewatering. And from that point it's pulled through a what we call our sludge pumps into a centrifuge with a polymer added as well and a dry cake that we call it comes onto a conveyor belt and we haul those by truckload to the landfill for both plants, both facilities. Professional education is a constant in a MAW's employee's work life. Innovations in clean water and wastewater treatment management go with the job, and MAW's employees take pride in being current and up-to-date. The result is MAW's facilities and employees are some of the most decorated in the state, region and nation. The operators that we bring on board, we make sure that they have the capability of doing what's necessary for the treatment process. The operators that we hire, they come in through the personnel board, they do a pre-test, and that test qualifies them to be able to take the job as a TPO, a treatment plant operator. From there, they come into the facility. We have stringent, numerous training, that we do anything from webinars to in-house training. We also do certification classes with ADEM. We also have outside training that comes in and they have to do a mandatory training session in order for those guys to get qualified. And they also have to take a state grade four water certification exam in order for them to be qualified as a TPO one treatment plant operator. Testing is consistent and thorough at Moss. It is estimated that upon arrival, the water is tested every 15 minutes and continues right up to leaving for homes and businesses. MAWS does not consider federal or Alabama Department of Environmental Management standards a goal, but rather a given. A MAWS employee's target is always beyond governmental standards. 
We have great employees that work here at Malls. I'm very proud of them. I think they have a very critical mission and I think they take that to heart and own that and try to do the best job that they can. Uh, a lot of the work that they do is something that they learn on the job and it's a continual process. Well, again, we're learning something new every day and it's something that we uh, value here at Malls as far as the education of our employees and helping them with their professional development. At some point, we will have to consider updating or replacing a facility. The digital revolution has changed some element of every activity for all businesses, and Moz is no exception. Ultimately, people make the difference in any organization. Moz has maintained a spirit and pride knowing that the work they do is a matter of public health. When you have to be innovative and the technological solution is not an option, it instills resourcefulness and determined productivity. And we all are the beneficiaries of a collective good attitude. Next in our series, we will provide an in-depth look at how Moz gets water to you. For more information, please visit keepwaterworking.com. In Mobile, Alabama, we are fortunate to have an abundant supply of water. However, getting that water from the source into the homes and businesses is hard work and takes time, energy, and money. We hope to give you a behind-the-scenes look at the complexity of this process and the effort required to get water from our source to homes and businesses where it is used in our daily lives. There's a lot that goes into turning on the faucet and having good, clean water available. Please enjoy our series on what it takes to keep water working. Under the streets and sidewalks of our city, there are enough water pipes and wastewater pipes laid back to back to make a trip to Los Angeles and halfway home to Mobile. Half of them are 50 or more years old and if it is wastewater, the problems often multiply. To give an idea of what Moz has to prepare for and deal with, wastewater contains hydrogen sulfide, which can erode concrete after constant exposure. The water system and the wastewater system, for that matter, goes back to a point in time when some of these earlier pipes were installed, we were actually riding horses in Mobile. Um, and some of our water lines are more than 100 years old. And so we go back to the, the late 1800s when water lines and so forth were installed. And, and like anything else, they get old, they age, and they need to be renewed or replaced. For decades, we've patched pipelines and so forth. And like a tire, you can patch it once and that might be okay. You can patch it twice and you might still be okay. But by the time you patch it the third and fourth time, it loses its integrity and it loses its ability to provide you the service that it was intended and ultimately it has to be replaced. The same thing is true with an automobile. We buy an automobile, it's reliable for a period of time, then it needs repairs and we make repairs, but after, after a time it gets to a point where it's reached its useful life. It, it's no longer reliable and it has to be replaced. Well what we know is, especially with automobiles and the same thing with infrastructure, when it needs to be replaced, it costs far more to replace it than what it cost to originally purchase it. And that's what we're faced here in this utility. Technology for protecting and maintaining the delivery system infrastructure is very good and getting better. Moz has incorporated technology where possible and the cost savings and efficiency have been impressive. However, much of the current technology is not viable because some parts and pieces of the Moz infrastructure have outlived their usefulness. You can only repair things for so long and then you get to the point of having to actually replace that. And it is a challenge because you're digging up streets which inconveniences people. Uh, it's very costly to replace that pipe. But after a period of time, you have to get to that. Now, if there's a pipe that breaks down on the street today, We'll go out and look at that. If we're able to, we'll put a repair band on that, uh, which will hold it for a good period of time. After a while though, if you continue to have breaks on that same line, you have to get to the point of replacing that pipe totally. 
And again, this is a challenge that we face in this utility, and quite frankly, it's a challenge that all water utilities around the country are dealing with today. Have you ever wondered, where does one go to purchase a water tower? There's not a store, and to install one? The cost estimate is certainly not inexpensive. It is just an indication that despite high-profile, giant reminders like water towers, as citizens, we can take a basic source of survival for granted. Most of Ma's infrastructure we never see, unless a street is being excavated. Next in our series, we will head to a place we don't often think about, Ma's wastewater treatment plants. For more information, please visit KeepWaterWorking.com. In Mobile, Alabama, we are fortunate to have an abundant supply of water. However, getting that water from the source into the homes and businesses is hard work and takes time, energy, and money. We hope to give you a behind-the-scenes look at the complexity of this process and the effort required to get water from our source to homes and businesses where it is used in our daily lives. There's a lot that goes into turning on the faucet and having good, clean water available. Please enjoy our series on what it takes to keep water working. In modern life, Water offers two distinct stories, one as the helpful hero and the other as the unwitting transporter of unpleasantness and disease. The story of clean, fresh water as a symbol of purity that is vital to our very lives is starkly contrasted with wastewater as a conveyor of human inelegance, creating environmental and public health disasters, a paradox that has persisted through the ages. When the water enters the plant, it is raw sewage coming from household industrial type facilities. We bring it in at the uh, Wright Smith plant, we bar screen it, we take all the heavy debris out, we pump it up the hill to our clarifiers, settle out the solids, treat the water, pump our solids to our digesters. The Wright Smith plant is a trickling filter plant. It's an old plant, they don't build these type of plants anymore, uh, they take up a lot of real estate. So uh, that's one of the main reasons they don't build them anymore. It's a good plant, it works real good. We put out an excellent effluent. Like drinking water production, we have two facilities to deal with wastewater, Wright Smith and C.C. Williams Wastewater Treatment Facilities. Wastewater standards are critical. Moss and its employees have won many awards for achieving high standards that are regulated by many agencies. Because of the health and environmental risk, testing is even more important and just as frequent as those of the Moss filtration facilities. When that water goes back into the bay, it meets or exceeds all of the regulatory requirements established by ADEM, and uh, it is safe when it leaves the plant. Moss takes the environment very serious, and if you look at what we're spending in order to change and upgrade our facilities and so forth to uh, improve our deliverance, conveyance, and treatment of water. It's all related to both public health and environmental health. What we do is very important. We are very fortunate that you can look three to four directions in any area of Mobile, and you're probably gonna find water walking those directions. We need to make sure that we have and protect the environment by clean water being distributed back into these areas, these bodies of water as we're able to enjoy those recreational activities. The wastewater system in Mobile is a closed system, which means there is no interaction between wastewater and stormwater drainage. The city of Mobile manages a stormwater drainage system. The new $8 million swab system ensures that the wastewater system is closed and watertight. We are a closed system. We are designed to be a closed system meaning that malls is designed to keep water out. We do not want rainwater impacting our system. Our treatment plants, the capacity is not designed to handle it. We're not a combined system. Stormwater is separate. Stormwater is maintained and upkept by the city of Mobile. It is a separate system than the Mobile Area Water and Sewer System. We just recently constructed a swab facility at our Halls Mill Basin. Our system is divided into three basins. We have our Three Mile Basin, our Slava Basin, 
and our Halls Mill Basin. And in this basin, we constructed uh, swabs, which are open basins, to actually divert the amount of water we're not able to maintain in our system. It's like a bottleneck. And as we get too much water in, we can't maintain it and can't pump it. So what we have to do now is we built these basins that we divert this rainwater as we get it automatically. It's a great system. It's signaled by levels, and as the levels get up, an automatic valve will divert the flows into these basins, and it will hold them there until we're able to maintain and pump the capacity we need. Another investment that we're looking to try to reduce SSOs. Proximity to the waterfront is a necessity for the treatment facilities, and in the past isolation in industrial zones was considered a community benefit. Our water rates and sewer rates are the only source of revenue that we have. So when it comes to having to renew this infrastructure, the only place we can go is to our customers. And when we look at what we spend on other utilities, we have to ask ourselves, why has water been so low in cost for so many years? But if you truly understood what it takes to deliver water to your home, you would understand why it's as expensive as it is. Moss owes a great deal of thanks to the community because the community pays the rates and what we want the community to know is is we've got that money working for you. The utility is a public utility. It's owned by the community. And so we want it to be something that the community is proud of. We hope you have enjoyed our four-part series of a behind-the-scenes look at what it takes to keep water working. For more information, please visit keepwaterworking.com.